Hello all, welcome to another edition of uh, Maker's Deep Dive. Today it's Satish and uh, I'm going to talk about Web 3.0. Before we get into the topic, I would love to give a small introduction about me. Uh, I'm born and brought up in India and for my profession, I had come to Dubai. I used to work with a company called as Emirates Airlines. I was there for 15 years in uh, innovation and innovation technologies. When I left, I was head of technology innovation. My work experience with Emirates gave me pretty much international exposure. And I had traveled across the globe to different universities, to different innovation labs of different enterprises, and had a very good opportunity to understand what's happening in the tech world. And that gave me an edge to even see the evolving uh, technology landscape, you know, starting from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. What do I do now? I am an entrepreneur. I am focusing more on technology and I'm building products. I'm building two products at this point in time. One is Beehive and one is Mind and Mob. Very soon the product is going to go live and uh, you'll be knowing more about that shortly. The first topic which I would love to cover is how to build a Web3 startup. First of all, there has been uh, big news about you know Web3 starting 2020, if I'm not wrong. And even before that, there were roadmaps about technology on how the internet is evolving. And as it evolved, we were given an insight about what would be happening in web 3.0 world but now the actual web 3.0 world has started there are misconceptions around web 3.0 that you know web 3 is just about crypto it's just about blockchain but it's actually much more uh, than that so our intention in this edition of makers deep dive is to get a little bit deeper into what is Web 2 and what is Web 3. And we will be focusing on how to build a Web 3 startup. We'll start with Web 2. We all know about the dot-com bust, which happened in 2020. And after that, the next cycle came somewhere around 2007 and 2008. It's kind of an underturn rule that every seventh year or eighth year, there has been some disruption around uh, the technology landscape. The Web 2 technologies introduced the centralized data management. Actually, before that, it was more into an, an, an brand or a company or a corporate or an enterprise data center. People used to deploy their services in the data center and the customers used to consume data from the data center. This was costly, this was time consuming. As you are away from the server, the latency increases. These were the problems which were solved by Web2. Web2 introduced cloud computing. Web2 introduced high-tech processors. Web2 introduced GPUs, uh, graphical processing units. More importance were given to that. Web2 primarily introduced an advanced version of browser, which could take HTML5, JavaScript, and Web2 introduced high-end computing uh, devices. Right, and these technologies, these technology landscape, along with the evolve, evolve, evolvement in the uh, silicon chips completely disrupted then existing Fortune 500 uh, companies. Almost 50 to 60 new companies came around the Web2 space, came around 2008, and they, start, they started disrupting the existing status quo of uh, big companies, you know, Fortune 500 companies. Most of them went bankrupt. But why did Web2 become a super success? And if Web2 is success, then why do we need Web3 is the question, you know, which uh, we tend to ask. 
Web2 in a way centralized the data. Web2 in a way created an aggregator platform. Web2 in a way created a platform where we, users could share their view. If you remember the old websites which we had, uh, like you know, uh, pet.com and things like that, people used to go to the bottom and when they used to click the contact us session, you will see a phone number there and you have to contact that phone number. So basically it was more static and very less interaction between the end user and the product. But Web2 changed that paradigm and it started interaction through the browser. And that was, that was the next big thing where people were ready to come into a web platform and started sharing not just data about their interest, but their personal data as well. And that's how big giants like Facebook evolved, Instagram, WhatsApp, and several other Snapchat, several other companies evolved during that uh, time. The drawback in this model was even though the brands went into all these platform and did a campaign about them, ran several uh, programs around them, but they were not really able to own the users. The users were owned by the platform. The platforms were primarily free and they were the product. The end users were the product for the platform. And the platform used to sell products data or users data to big brands for them to come and market and things like that. And we all know the mishaps which has happened because of data sharing and, and, and several aspects around it. Very recently, Apple introduced privacy. It, it became more serious about privacy policies. It became more serious about uh, tracking user data across the different apps. And we see how that privacy setting has disrupted the whole Web2 uh, companies. The advertisement market has come down. Many have filed uh, bankruptcy, including the latest uh, giants who have who had to sack and let go so many uh, people. So these were the problems with respect to data and Web3 primarily addresses those concerns. Uh, Web3, even though in principle talks about decentralization of data, it also includes the latest and greatest of artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things quantum computing and 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 things like that edge computing and more power to the browsers and 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 technologies uh, like that and definitely blockchain is one big component of web3 which in principle came up with the new architecture of decentralizing the data not just in central servers but in a server which can even be owned by you Peer-to-peer -peer computing were there in Web2 uh, space, but mostly peer-to-peers -peer were used for file sharing. But evolve the the peer-to-peer -peer computing has evolved in much better way through uh, blockchain. So that's uh, you know the difference between Web2 and uh, Web3 computing. So when we talk about a startup in a Web2 and building a new startup in a Web3. In principle, the thought process is completely different. If you were a Web2 entrepreneur, then your focus would be more on to bring more users into the platform, increase the revenue and focus more on daily active users, focus more on monthly active users, focus is, is, is more on the traction part of, of the uh, product. But in principle, Web3 is more into not just users, but it is more into empowering the users you know, with, with the rights for their data, uh, uh, empowering the users with owning their own data and deciding what kind of uh, data has to be uh, shared to the uh, general public or to other uh, platforms. And in fact, even hiding their hiding their identity, you know, sovereign identity is, is is definitely becoming a very important part in Web3, where the user will decide which attribute to expose to different websites instead of the platform creating an identity for a person and allowing the person to use the identity created by the platform. 
example login with facebook example login with gmail these are all the fundamental differences of web 2 and web 3 ideal location to build a business right now to be to be honest there is no right location at still till date at, at this uh, point in time and and the reasons are pretty much straightforward the web3 space is evolving a lot it is evolving day by day till date we have not seen a golden standard for web3 uh, startups uh, as such definitely the technology is empowering definitely the technology is key to take the you know human mankind to the next level all those prospects are definitely there but how does the web3 uh, startups work or where do we set up and how does it gets how does it get regulated is still in in question we all know about the crypto crypto uh, bust blockchain uh, bitcoin was started somewhere around 2008 and now it has gained some value and everybody owns a little bit of crypto for at least testing and uh, other uh, purposes but still the coins and the other uh, crypto field they have not evolved much or they have not been backed by something solid so of course definitely the principle behind cryptos is there is no green bag there is no oil bag there is no gold bag but still currently it it it, it looks more like supply and demand uh, ratio more demand is created for that particular crypto the more valuation increases so there is no stability uh, in in the crypto space however the technology which is used to create uh, the, this kind of technology, the underlying blockchain technology is really interesting. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, fungible tokens have more value more than actually being used just as a you know, monkey poster being bought for some price and things like that. The principles behind many Web3 startups are around you know, a, a, a permanent ledger for an, for an individual, a permanent ledger for a product, a, a beautiful timeline which can you know uh, store more information about a person to one uh, identity. Let, let's take one uh, fundable, uh, uh, fungible token, non-fungible token. That you know, these are the things which are really really interesting. And uh, if any startup focuses on those area, definitely uh, it, it, it's 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 going to be interesting. At this point in time, there are few uh, places like Estonia, even even the place I live, uh, Dubai, you know, are definitely a, a good place to start your uh, business, especially in Dubai. The uh, regulations are working very hard towards allowing more and more Web3 based startups to set up. There are regulations around virtual assets. There are regulation around digital assets. And eventually, it is definitely going to improve and more and more location is going to become ideal. The next topic is tokenomics and capital raise. Tokenomics is a really uh, interesting uh, topic. It's not fundamentally different from how the existing economics used to work with respect to raising IPO and uh, going to public and you know having a cap table and that cap table uh, becoming a public cap table the founders getting into the uh, minimal uh, share mode and the public getting into more mode having the board seats for more uh, people who have knowledge across the industry than just that, that industry. You know, the, the principles in principle, they, they are same. But the scale and the volume in which a token can be managed is, is, is fundamentally different. Of course, blockchain, tokenomics, everything is around mathematics. And everything is trying to do the things which has been done before in a much better manner, in a much foolproof manner, 
in a much non-hackable manner and most importantly in a much transparent manner. So when we talk about tokenomics, it's fundamentally important that you have a product for which you want to create uh, tokens. It shouldn't be a case that you know we just go and create a white paper and a paper uh, and based on that we create uh, tokens. So definitely there has to be a strong product, and the product has to be tightly integrated with tokens. For example, there can be a product which has e-commerce product and uh, somebody who validates that product gets some benefit somebody who moderates a community gets some benefit somebody who is running a show for a specific uh, event gets some benefits and even a customer of a brand as a loyalty can also be managed through uh, tokens in principle uh, when and when a token when a tokenomics is written of course in, in principle, the base, basic uh, uh, shares are almost same. You know, founders have some share. Uh, the support and enhancement of the product that has some shares. Investors have some shares, and employees have some shares, and general public also has uh, some shares. We all know the ESOP, right? Employee stock options. You can also see tokenomics as customer stock options. You know, your customers can also own a part of uh, part, part of your. They can also be part of your uh, cap table. Practically, doing this in a regulated environment could involve a lot of paperwork. But with respect to tokens, it is super simple because it is an an digital product, and you digitally own a portion of a token. And how do we raise uh, capital for a Web three startup, which is based on the tokens? There are many different uh, theories which has been, which is currently being in practice. In uh, two to three ways, uh, there are something. There are there is one way called as pre-sale. You know, even before the uh, tokens are published in an exchange or in a decentralized exchange, based on the potential and based on the value, people do a capital raise. And when the tokens are published. Uh, the tokens are transferred to the investors and the second way of doing is having a product having a revenue having traction and having lots of users uh, uh, tightly coupled with the tokens and the you know, tokens being uh, mined on an on a uh, daily basis for a specific purpose and then based on that you the, the allocated shares for the investors are then you know released for uh, capital raise so there are many ways and it is still evolving you know people knew about you know we know we know about ipo then came ico then came security token now the most popular ones are utility tokens utility tokens are really doing good and it's it's much regulated than the uh, initial tokens and i'm foreseeing that tokens are 